Jennifer Green. I'm a professor in educational psychology at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. Thank you, Dr. Green, for being here with us today. And I would like to start by asking you, uh, could you begin by sharing some of the ways in which culture importantly shows up in your work as an educational researcher? Well, most of my work is um, either the practice of educational program evaluation or research on educational program evaluation. And since many educational programs are targeted to students and adults who are not succeeding as well in mainstream society, mm -hmm. unfortunately, because um, poverty, race, and class are all confounded, um, many of the programs that I work with are engaging with people who are on the margins of society. And sadly, um, culture is one determinant of, of that. And for me, culture, I know this is another question, but uh, culture is, you know, I, I, I look to anthropologists for kind of the generic meanings of culture, norms, patterns, beliefs, understandings of the world. But I also think it's, um, it's, it's marked by um, one's kind of, at least in America, contemporary American society, by mm -hmm. one's kind of status in the society. Mm -hmm. um, although we are a land that supposedly welcomes everybody, um, mm -hmm. we have stratifications and I, I see culture as entangled with those stratifications. Thank you. Uh, can you please elaborate on, on what you just mentioned? as it closely relates to CREA's focus on assessment and evaluation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, assessment and evaluation, they are related, of course, but different practices. I'll speak more about evaluation. In evaluation, we aim to gather empirical information on the experiences of an intervention, a designed, mm -hmm. focused, funded intervention, um, educational intervention to help advance a particular group of people in a particular um, domain of study. Um, <clears throat> so we gather measurements, information about people, and we endeavor, um, culturally responsive evaluators, endeavor to gather information that we can interpret in ways similar to how people are making sense of their world. Mm -hmm. But when the there's a cultural difference between the evaluator and the people we are studying, we have to be particularly mindful of the fact that we may not understand the world as our respondents, the kids in the program are understanding it because culture differentiates the ways in which we understand the world. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we evaluators um, in particular, I assess my people would be the same, have to attend very thoughtfully, carefully, and deliberatively to the dimensions of culture that show up in the data that we gather. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Could you now please describe the, the meanings or dimensions of culture that are most central to your own work and essentially expand on that? Okay. <clears throat> I think in the work that I do, again, educational program evaluation, often with school kids, but sometimes in community programs with adults. And I've been working with um, the education program in a prison. So, mm. um, culture in those contexts is, again, often deeply confounded with class, um, s totally entangled. Um, so people in often who are targets or, or intended beneficiaries of the programs that get evaluated are people who have not had the same opportunities as many mainstream Americans. And they have not had those because they're poor. And then they're poor, often they are disproportionately members of minority groups. Um, so it is, it is front and center. Um, mm -hmm. in the work that I do, and I don't try to disentangle ethnicity, religion, race, and class, and anything like that. It, it's all entangled, and I, I endeavor to respect the entanglement rather than try to say, sort out different dimensions mm -hmm. of culture that are prevalent. Okay. Thank you. And, and uh, you did give us an example, but could you please comment on the salience or importance of this cultural dimension uh, and the context in which in which you work. Mm -hmm. Again, I think it's it, it culture is front and center mm -hmm. in contemporary educational program evaluation. Again, mainly because funded programs and policies are targeted to people who are not succeeding very well mm -hmm. in the system as it exists. So, um, so most often the beneficiaries of um, a particular program are people who are 
culturally different um, than the evaluation team or certainly than mainstream America. And just another example, culture is, is again often for me is perhaps rooted in class, rooted in economics. Um, uh, it's certainly for people who've been in this country a long time. We evaluated a um, high school math curriculum in a, a central Illinois high school that mm -hmm. served um, quite a large area because it was a rural high school. And the most, the, the children who were most at risk, in, uh, placed most at risk in that context were children from rural areas and poor families, mm -hmm. most of whom were Caucasian or white. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were not ethnic minorities, but they were, they were very disengaged from high school and the culture of the high school and so mm -hmm. forth. So um, class to me is often the, the dominant uh, characteristic of a culture that, that matters in the programs I evaluate. Thank you. <coughs> the, the core mission of CREA is to generate evidence for policy making that is not only methodologically but also culturally and contextually defensible. Um, having said that, can you please describe the ways in which your current work connects to CREA's mission? That's a, it's a very good question, um, a tough one. Um, but I will mention at this time the work that I do in mixed methods approaches to evaluation. Um, I, I do genuinely aspire in mixed methods thinking and mixed methods work to genuinely respect multiple methodological ways of making sense of our world. It's a, it's, it's a journey to get to a place of genuine respect um, because I fear that large scale quantitative methodology is, is not, that large scale quantitative methodology does not do a good job of respecting um, in some fundamentally important way cultural differences, class, culture, race, religion, um, because it is often an aggregated methodology um, or it's disaggregated by very simplistic markers. But still, I think we need the aggregated picture. I think we need um, the story of, on the average, how does this look? Or what proportion of the children are doing well? Um, but if you combine that with uh, other methodologies which are able to try, uh, to more successfully capture meanings and dimensions of culture mm -hmm. and their consequences in a particular context for children, um, then I think it, it, you have a more complete portrait, even though it will s still fall short of full understanding. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, how do you see your future work interfacing with CREA and connecting to its mission? My swan song, my retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I'm very, ex I'm very excited uh, about the launch of CREA, even at this point in my career, which is near, near the end. Um, but I see that launch as an opportunity to um, push, um, push my own work in ways that I might not if it was 20 years ago. Um, and, and opportunities for a colleague, co uh, working with colleagues on that. This is coming to Korea is like coming to my family. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many people I've known for 30, 40 years in this journey are here. So there's this energy this kind of excitement. I had a wonderful talk yesterday with Melvin Hall about all of his grand ideas for doing just what you said, advancing the mission, mission of uh, CREA. And um, so collaborating once again with, with Melvin would, would be a, a very wonderful way to finish out my last few years. So it's so CREA, it's, 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 it's great timing, even though it, for me it, it will be a bit of a short journey. But it's great time because there's energy and opportunity here to, to take another step prior to retirement. Yeah, what a great way to lead towards exactly, retirement. Exactly, exactly. What were uh, what what are what were your goals for participating in Korea in the Korea conference uh, as a panelist? Uh, well, I was very honored to be invited. I could have invited lots of people, so I I felt very honored and I felt. Uh, challenged to try to meet that um, honor. Uh, mm -hmm. So just for me personally, I um, used, I, I had been on sabbatical last semester and hadn't had a chance to engage with um, 
the work of that sabbatical, which was to try to uh, better understand the revitalization of the Maori people in New Zealand and how that shows up in the evaluation practice in New Zealand. Um, I was there a short time, so I don't claim to really understand much, but I had there was a lot of material there for me to think well about what could I learn from what I observed in their evaluation practices that could be relevant here. So that's a very specific answer to your question, but it was such a great prompt, <laughs> catalyst mm -hmm. for me to return to, to that work, which I hadn't had a chance to, to begin to sift through it and say, so what can we learn? So that was, that was my goal, to spend a little time with that material. Wonderful. So um, what do you hope your audience learned from, from your talk? I, I hope, I hope they, they learned what I learned in <laughs> putting it together, mm -hmm. was that even though the particular context of the Maori people in Aotearoa, New Zealand, is unique and has some connections to native indigenous peoples elsewhere, we can still make connections to um, engaging meaningfully and respectfully with cultural difference in all of its dimensions. We can, we can still learn from that context um, some very important um, ideas, some ways of being, ways of thinking, ways of doing um, that I wasn't sure we could um, because it's, it's a unique context and one wants to respect that context. But that was my effort to say, what can we learn? for our work here, uh, not necessarily with indigenous people, but with many other dimensions of culture. Um, and I, I think there's, there's lots to be learned, so I think my presentation was a start on that. Wonderful. How do you see these goals uh, of serving the mission of Korea? say, and it's also uh, captures some of my experience here at this inaugural conference, is that this is a, this is a collaborative shared journey, um, this work on um, meaningfully and consequentially attending to cultural in, culture in the work that we do. And if we walk this journey alone, it won't be all that successful, um, but this experience I had in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and the relationships I developed there that still exist and still continue. There's several of my buddies here, um, and the, the insights that I gained um, from working with them, observing them, um, it clearly says this is, this is a shared journey. This we can, it's a trite lesson over history, but maybe a profound one for Korea that this is we need to we need to get together as much as we can uh, because that's that's how the work will happen. Beautiful. H how do you see these goals serving the the broader mission or vision of cultural competence and responsiveness in education or perhaps more broadly in research or evaluation? Korea Korea could be um, a a really significant presence in. In educating the rest of the <laughs> assessment, evaluation, and educational research or research community, social research community in general, about what what meaningful, respectful, consequential attention to culture looks like, um, I think Korea could could be a significant presence um, in in making meaningful, consequential, respectful attention to culture part part and parcel or an integrated part of much more educational assessment, research, and evaluation. Um, right now, it's, it's kind of one way of thinking among many, one way of doing things, one way of thinking. But it, that doesn't really work in today's society because most of the contexts in which we work are not homogeneous. So that would be my aspiration. Over, over the decades, which take a, I take a while, but that 
Philadelphia could really help make this part of everyday assessment, evaluation, research. Um, so you couldn't imagine conducting a study where this is not part of what you're doing. Wonderful. And finally, uh, what vision, aspirations, or tactics do you have for Korea? And you alluded to that. Uh, I think I just said it. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I won't try to say it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I hope there's a snippet or two. Yeah. Mm -hmm.